Christian talk with a Caribbean twist. Iron sharpens iron, with Linda Casimir and friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Iron Sharpens Iron. This is Linda Kazmaier and friends. Tonight we are going to, as I promised, we are going to continue our discussion with a little bit of a twist. Tonight we're going to talk about what God, what did God reveal to us in the last two years about ourselves or about him that surprised us. So we're going to go ahead and do the usual. We're going to open up with prayer. And then I'm going to hand the mic over to the panelists. And uh, Francine's going to be, um, she's going to take the mic and we're going to go from there. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you. Thanking you, Lord God, for another opportunity to come together as family and friends in Jesus' name. Asking you, Lord God, for the blessings for another week, another year of our lives, that you be the head of all things concerning us, that you carry us through this year, carry our family through this year, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you come against, with your mighty hand, this epidemic, this pandemic called COVID, Lord God, that you commanded to be cast into the very lake of fire where it belongs. I lift up all the families that have been affected in the last two years. I lift up those who are grieving, Lord God, for the loss of very precious family members. And Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you do not allow this sickness, this wickedness, Lord God, to claim any more lives. We pray this in the much less wonderful name of Jesus Christ, by your precious Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay, now, um, like I said, we're going to go ahead and start. Francine, go ahead. The mic is yours. Okay. Um. In the last two years, I've learned God has shown me a lot about him and about myself. Um, as far as learning about myself, I learned that I didn't really know how to love myself. I didn't really know about boundaries, setting boundaries in relationships and sticking to those boundaries. Um so I didn't have any boundaries in my relationship, which which often led to me being um, taken advantage of. Um, and also, um, I learned some not so nice qualities about myself that I was very, um, I was very, there was a lot of, there was a lot of um, wickedness in my heart, like a lot of thoughts that I would think just weren't pure thoughts. They weren't like, they weren't godly thoughts. Mm -hmm. It was like, um, if people did something wrong to me, it wouldn't be my automatic thought to think, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for them. God bless them. I'm going to pray for them. They might be having a bad day. Like my automatic thought would be, oh, I can't stand you. I wish you would just trip up and fall or something it was it would be something just not good and like the the godly thought would be like my second nature and I, I came to realize that you know if if I really was attached to divine and Christ is really in me why isn't that what's flowing out of me like it shouldn't be something that I have to work towards at this point and I realized that, you know, there was some changes that needed to be made. And I started praying and asking God to to change me and to to show me those, you know, ugly parts of myself, um, which, you know, is it's, it's hard when God starts showing you yourself because it's like it just makes you feel he does it in such a way that like you feel like just it makes you feel like you're just like like the dirt underneath the shoe like you just feel like so low but the way he does it is in such a loving way that you know that he's showing you yourself because he he's he's answering your prayer to change you 
So even though you feel so low, you feel so bad, it's like you you ha also have that hope because it's like, I asked you to change me and I asked you to show me this stuff. So thank you for showing me. Thank you for the grace because I know that you're working on me. And it's gotten to a point now where I have more, my thoughts are more like grace led. So it's like automatically when something, someone does something or says something that's offensive to me, I'm not so quick to offense anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's like in him showing me myself, it's allowed me to have more grace with other people. And um, as far as showing me about him, like it's, it's, I feel like, I feel like everything that I had my faith built on was just shattered. I feel like he allowed the very foundation to just be shaken so that he could start over and build a new because I had this 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 like mindset about God as like him being kind of like a genie in a bottle where if I pray and I tithe and I I I I give um offering like I felt like it was owed to me that he would be there for me it was owed to me that he would he would bless me in certain ways and like when when my very core was shaken it's like he took me back to the basics and it was like no he's not a genie in a bottle mm -hmm. he doesn't serve me i serve him i give to i give because i love him I don't give because I'm expecting for him to give back to me. I do for him because I love him. Yeah. So when things don't go my way, that doesn't mean he doesn't love me. It just means it's not going my way. But I had to like, I had to learn to take everything with grace and to my, my whole like concept of faith just changed. So it's like, yes, I believe his word. I believe that I am blessed. I'm the first. I'm not the last. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm blessed going. I'm blessed coming. But we live in this world and it's a fallen world and things, bad things will happen. Things that I don't want to happen will happen. And it doesn't mean that it's God's fault because a lot of so many times, like my first thought would be, how could you allow this? Mm -hmm. Like and it would I would have that that job complex yeah. where it was like I serve you, I love you, I put you first, I give to your church, I do this for your people, I do this for you. Why aren't you doing this for me? And it's like, um he, he had that 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 conversation with me, like, where were you when I put the stars into the sky? And I I I he humbled me. It really humbled me. And it's like, you know, I'm the servant. He doesn't serve me. I serve him. So if things aren't going my way, that's fine. Life doesn't have to go my way. Mm -hmm. In all things, I serve him because of who he is, not because of what he does for me. Right. If I'm going to serve him simply because of what I'm going to get in return. Then where is my heart really? Because eventually in this life, something, something happens that, that shakes you. Something happens that you think is just not fair. And you just assume that God is going to control other people and make things work out the way, the way you want them to work out. But he's not a God that controls other people like robots just for your sake. Everybody has a free will. Everybody can choose to do the godly thing or choose to do the ungodly thing. And other people many times will choose the ungodly thing, which will, will result in your hurt, which will result in your pain, your breaking. But in the middle of that, where is your faith? Are you going to go to God and say, 
you should have you shouldn't have allowed this to happen you shouldn't have allowed him to hurt me like that you shouldn't have allowed her to do this where were you why didn't you stop this hurt from happening to me or are you going to say you know what god this happened but i'm asking you to help me through it to strengthen me and to make me better in spite of this and help me to grow and learn from this and are you going to go to god and say you know what help me to forgive them. Help me to have grace because you had grace with me. Yes. Or are you going to do the job complex and say, I serve you. I love you. I pray to you every day. Why didn't you stop them? Why didn't you kill them? Kill them because they, they hurt me. They hurt your servant. So you kill them. And it's like, mm, no, you're the servant. You say you're a servant of God, but you're, you're making demands of him. Like he's your servant. Absolutely correct. So that's what, those are the things that I learned about God, that the whole, my whole concept of him and who he is and where I stand in this whole cosmic realm of like all these universes and galaxies that he's created, that I don't have pull with him just because I pray five times a day or just because I gave to the poor or just because I do the right thing. That's not what gives me pull with him. Yes. I have a relationship with him because I love him, but that doesn't give me pull or the right to go and rub on this bottle and expect to get my way every time I rub this bottle in just a certain way. Mm -hmm. So it was a hard lesson to learn, but I'm learning it. Mm hmm but not just job david did the same thing too how many of his psalms he talked just like what you were saying he talked exactly like that in his psalms and he recorded it that's true you know how many of his psalms he was telling god kill them yeah kill the kids yeah let the wives cheat on them let the children yeah. be on the street as beggars let the house burn down let the, the horses and the cows die David, David did the same exact thing. Yeah, he the same did. exact thing. David was such a man after God's heart. David, didn't, he didn't have to record that. He could have left that personally to himself and have the world believe he was such a perfect follower of God. But no, David was like, no, I want the world to see who mm -hmm. I was and how I thought God was. That's why I believe he was a man after God heart because David was straight up honest. And, he let it out. Huh? He let it out. Yeah. As long as he was and he, he wanted it to be recorded so people could see he was wrong concerning God. God is not who God is. And I love what you said that we are the servants yet we, we treat him like he's a servant when we demanding him to explain himself. Yeah. Where you was, why you let this happen? That's not the response of a servant. Yeah. That's so true. That is so on point and true. So on point and true on true and true. So I'm glad I'm glad you shared that with us, Francine. I really, really, really glad you shared that with us. Train my hands for war. Reclaiming your purpose and territory in God. Alabaster Box, The Unveiling. Experiencing the supernatural realms of God. Where Angels Tread. The Unseen Realms of God. Available on all online book outlets. Linda Casimir. Alabaster Box Ministries. Go ahead. Amen. Good night. What did you say, Ma? I know that's right. I know that's right. Who wants to go? Who wants to go next to talk about what they've learned? Babe, you want to take it? I go. Okay. You want to go? Oh, go ahead, babe. <laughs> go ahead, babe. <laughs> okay. Um, Being a gentleman. <laughs> as everyone on this panel knows, my journey for the last two years in losing my beloved husband and. I'm still in the process. I, you know, it's, I'm in a better place, but 
I still have my moments of sadness, but what brings me joy when I think about where he is with the Lord, it puts a smile on my face. Um, throughout this whole journey with God, I thank him for choosing me to be on this journey with him because in this entire process, it has taken me from a place of, I don't want to say, I never doubted God, but it has taken me to a higher place. That's a better choice of word. It has taken me to a higher place in God. It has taught me to trust God. It has taught me how to walk by faith and not by sight. And I'll explain why I say those two things. You know, throughout the entire process that it's my journey started May 25th of 2000. And during that time, you know, my husband got ill and for four months he was in the hospital fighting for his life. And I prayed relentlessly when I had an urgent prayer request, when the doctors would call me and say, you know, X, Y, Z doesn't look good or whatever. I used to send out urgent prayer requests to people who I believe would intercede on Eric's behalf and my behalf. And it came to a point where God shut that down. He stopped me. He's like, no, it's Eric you and me, meaning right. God, Bev, and Eric. He stopped me from sending out those prayer requests. Not that it was a bad thing, but right. God just wanted me to trust him and him alone. alone. Mm -hmm. I would say for the last three to four weeks of his life, that's the position that God had me, you know, where he would not allow me to send out prayer, urgent prayer requests. You know, the people that were praying, it was from past, you know, prayer requests, but nothing current. You know, he took me to that place of self where I can truly say today that I know how to trust God. You know, when I say I trust God, I'm not using just mere words. I'm saying it factually. And in terms of walking by faith and not by sight, I mean, for six days, I would Zoom visit with my husband. And on a Saturday or a Sunday, I would go and visit him in person. I knew his condition was dire. I weren't in denial of what was going on with his physical body. But I never saw him like he was really sick. Like, I can't explain it. I never saw him in that way that one would explain how he looked it. I never saw him that way. It wasn't until I would say maybe three, four months after he passed, I was, you know, looking through my cell phone for a particular picture. And in scrolling through the picture, because I took pictures of him every day, I was seeing pictures of him and I'm like, wow, my husband went from something to nothing. And as soon as I said that, the Holy Spirit said to me, because you were walking by faith and not by sight, that's why you didn't see him as he was. And that just, that just blessed my spirit so much because that's exactly what I was doing. I didn't even realize I was doing that, but that's exactly what I was doing because I didn't see him the way I saw him looking as I was scrolling through those pictures. I never saw that. And then the, the third thing was during the time of him being in the hospital and after he passed, when I walk, I would feel like I was floating. I know my, I was walking because my feet were touching the ground, but it didn't feel that way. It felt like I was walking in space. 
And that went on for months. And one day I turned to my youngest daughter and I said, Shanika, I don't know what this feeling is about. She's like, what? She said, I said to her, when I walk, it feels like I'm walking in space. And as soon as I said that to her, the Holy Spirit said to me, that's because that's me carrying you. Oh, wow. I said, my God. I mean, I've heard, I've heard those remarks about God carrying people through different things. But I can honestly say I've lived it. I've experienced it. Wow. It was, it was, I can't, I can't even describe what I felt at that moment when the Lord revealed that to me. Because every time it would happen, and I'm talking, it could be a few steps from my bed to the bathroom. That's the way I felt. Uh, I go out shopping or any, any, anywhere I go. That's what I used to feel. But wow. I was, wow, what is this feeling? Why do I feel like that? I know I'm walking. I, I used to literally look at my feet sometimes to make sure my feet is touching the ground. And that's mm -hmm. what I would see, but that wasn't what I was feeling. And when I opened up and confessed what I was feeling to my daughter, that's when the Holy Spirit informed me that was me carrying you. So that has, God has shown himself approved to me. He has shown me that he is God and God all by himself. Amen. And you know, it's, whew, it's so touching, you know, to my spirit when I think of the goodness of God and what he has done for me throughout this journey. And every day I try to make it a point and say, Lord, I thank you for choosing me to be on this journey with you because in my natural strength, in my natural mind, I couldn't do this without God, but God has shown me, you know, that Bev, I got you. I am with you. I've never left you. He has given me joy. He has given me peace. You know, here of late, people are telling me every time I go to church, you know, people are telling me, Bev, your smile is back. I thought I was always smiling. <laughs> But I guess they were seeing, they saw something that I didn't see. To me, I, I'm always smiling. But there's like, your, smiling is, your smile is back. Your joy is back. That's it. And I say, my God, I, you know, I was in a very, very low place. When I tell you low, I was low, you know. But God, that's all I could say. But God, and I thank him every day for choosing me to be on this journey with him. Because you see, the thing is, us as his children, as his sons and his daughters, the natural mind would say, I can't. But God would say, yes, you can. Because if someone had written the script of what I've been through since May 24th, 2000 until now, I would have been like, you crazy. There's no way I could do that. You said but May 24, 2000 or 2020? Oh, I'm sorry. 2020, my era. Okay. It, is to, it's, it is 2020, not 2000. Okay. And, and um, but just like the word of God says, with God, all things, mm -hmm. all things are possible. You know, what may seem impossible to us is possible with God. And for the listeners out there, no matter what you're going through, even if you're not going through something right now, today, no one knows what tomorrow holds. Amen. Just, just, just hold on. Put your faith and trust in God, not in man. He is able, you know, and God is no respect to a person. He did it for me. He'll do the same for you. You mm -hmm. don't have to go through the same situation that I'm going through. You know, we all need God every day of our lives, whether it's for something minor or it's for something major. 
you know, so I encourage the listeners, you know, just trust God because he's faithful and he's going to do what he, what he says he's going to do. He would not fail you. Man would fail you, but God will never fail you. Amen. And I have, a, I have a different outlook today in my walk with God than I had prior to me being on this journey with God. I'm not the same person spiritually that I was before. I didn't, I wasn't in a backslidden stage, but I wasn't as strong in my walk with God as I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've seen God show himself, approved to me, Beth, I am God. You know, I can do this. We can do this. And I, I tell myself, you know, from time to time, there's nothing that can happen to me that together me and God can't handle. Can because, I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. When you said you're not the same person, to kind of give mm -hmm. the viewers a comparison, could you kind of give an idea to them as to break what it you down? Were, what you were before and what you can how you came out to to becoming? Sure. When I say I'm not the same person, what I'm referring to is prior to being on this journey with God, I verbally would say I trust God and I have faith in God because, quote, unquote, that's the Christian thing to say. Mm -hmm. But there's a difference saying it as mere words than going through the valley of the shadow of death. It takes your perspective to a complete different level. Reset, women's retreat. Reset and set free. Hosted by Linda Casimir. And that's where I'm at today. Because I, when I say I trust God, I'm not just speaking mere words. I'm speaking from within, from my spirit. That, yes, I trust God. Because God has took me to, from a dark place to into now his marvelous light where I have joy back in my heart. In the midst of my sadness, I'm still sad because I miss Eric daily, but I have sadness with joy, if that makes sense. And my joy over, uh, over you know, it's more, it's greater than the, than the sadness that I feel because Eric is going to forever be in my heart. Because when we got married, the two of Eric and Bev were the two became one and now half is gone. And I'm like, what, what the kids would say, the cheese stands alone, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. that's where my broken heart comes in. But God has been sustaining me, you know, in my weakness, God is my strength. He gets me through from day to day, hour to hour, minute by minute, second by second. You know, and I'm doing all this with God. I couldn't do it by myself. So that's what I mean when I say, and I've learned to walk by faith and not by sight because those four months that my husband was fighting for his life, I was believing God for a miracle to heal him. I listened to what to the reports that the doctors were giving me day after day, sometimes two, three times a day or whatever. But I took those reports as facts because I know that God had the final say. And my husband was a Christian as well. And I know that God was for him and not against him. And the God that Eric served and I served was greater than any infirmity that was in his body. You know, so that's my... Um, explanation of 
you know, I was walking by faith and not by sight. Okay. I wasn't looking at what I saw. I was trust. I was seeing it, but I didn't let it consume me. I was putting my faith and trust in God because I know that God was able. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, that's going to be very pivotal because with this COVID thing, a lot of women have lost spouses. Mm -hmm. And when they listen to this, I pray that it res resonates in their heart, you know, that this is something that only God can walk you through, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I, I wanted you to, to really go in depth in your explain explaining, you know, because uh, my sister Denise, she just lost lost her husband this week, you mm -hmm. know, not to COVID, but you know, it doesn't make a difference. Oh, it doesn't matter. Death right. Death. It doesn't matter. So that, that kind of gave me an idea to kind of look into the window of what that grief looks like, what that journey looks like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and for the listeners, my encouragement to you, whether you have previously lost a loved one, whether it's a husband, it's a wife, it's a son, it's a daughter, a niece, a nephew, a mother, a father, it ain't too late. If, you, if you're still hurting from the loss of your loved one, turn your life to God. He is able he would take you through the same way he did it for me. You know, just call on him. You know, if you don't have an intimate relationship with him, just accept him into your heart. Look, confess your fault and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart and live. Help me to turn from my wicked ways. I want to live right. I want to do right. And he will. And for those who may endure loss at a later time, you know, God is able. He is a comforter. Yes. God has given me his peace that surpasses all human understanding. Ain't no doctor, ain't no Valium or nothing. No drugs that doctors could give you could give you that peace that God gives you. Amen. I mean, to, to, to give an example of the peace that God gave me, it's not common for a wife to read her husband's eulogy at his funeral. God allowed me to do that. Most of the times the wife or the, 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 the mother or whomever is so shaken up and broken up, they can't even utter the words high but God allowed me to read my husband's eulogy with God anything is possible Man. I didn't even believe in myself that I could because I had the arrangement with my pastor that I would go as far as I can and he was going to pick up where I left off but when he called me up to the podium, I felt my knees shaking. I took a step backward and I said, come on, Holy Spirit, let's do this. And he came and he showed up. Amen. And I was able to do it only by the grace of God. I, Beverly, did not do it in my own strength. There's no way. But I did because God allowed me. He helped me. The Holy Spirit gave me the utterance to say what I needed to say. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that I can say I have a relationship with him. Amen. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. Every journey in God is so special, so unique, so amazing. Even through the journey of grief. It, and it ends up being such an amazing, amazing journey, you know, how he comes in and like a soft wind and just like mm -hmm. you, like you said, carries you. Yeah, he does. I, I've heard people say that before, but 
I never doubted that God carried them, but I never knew what it felt what like. What it felt like, yeah. Until <laughs> I experienced it because I was experiencing it for months and I didn't know what it was. I'm like, why do I feel like this? Right. I'm walking and I feel like I'm floating. But I and it was like, was it like a constant everyday experience yeah. for you? Mm -hmm. Wow. It was every time I walked. Wow. Every step I took. And, and what just came to my spirit is, I don't, there's a, 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 a I don't, is, is, is it a scripture with the footprints in the sand? That's not a scripture, is it? Uh-uh. -uh. Footprints in the sand? You know, right. you see your two footprints, but then there's one, but you only seen one person? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the premise of it is scriptural, but that itself yeah. is scriptural, yeah. That's not, yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said yeah. he'll never leave, he'll never leave you or forsake you. And his word is true. Mm -hmm. he, he, showed that, he showed that beyond a reasonable doubt to me. Because yeah. the day of salvation, when we all accepted Christ into our hearts, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Never means never. Never, yes. And I can attest to that. He never left me, even when I was in the in the pit. <laughs> you know, I mean, when I tell you I was low, I was low. But, but God, that's all I could say. Yeah. You know, it's not an experience that I wish for anyone who are in Christ or out of Christ. But right. death is something we all have to encounter. At yeah, one unfortunately. Yeah. You know, it's sure. something so. Awesome. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you, Bev. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Francine. Um, two, awesome. great, two great experiences, two great testimonies. Um, who wants to go next with their, um, their two year revelation or time with God? See, series, Lionel? I go. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, I say in the two years, what God has showed me is um is how how it's just how to walk by faith in pretty much everything I do. Be able to walk by faith and to trust in Him, and it's not walking by faith as in just saying, "Oh." I believe God will take care of it and, you know, drop it there. It's walking by faith where I know God is with me and God will take care of it and God will handle it according to his will, according to his plan and what he has for me. And I still go out and, you know, you still go out and you do the work and you try to, you know, find a resolution, but, it's kind of in between that that going out and just doing it yourself and walking by faith. It's it's hard to explain knowing that um if something if something happens and and I know that everything will be all right according to according to God's will. That's what I always say, according to his plan, according to his will. I know it's happening for a reason. And if it's a problem, there, there'll be a resolution. You know, he'll put something in front of me. Not, not only will he just fix the problem, I'm not assuming that he'll always just fix it. You know, it's not that kind of faith where he, it's in his hands. He's going to fix it. I hand it over to him. He's going to fix it. I know he's going he's gonna to guide me through it. He's going to put people and things in place for me to get to a resolution. And not only that, just when times aren't looking good, according, you know, to my view, I know that he has a plan. So if, if I'm feeling alone or if I'm feeling by myself, I know that God is with me and I have faith that God will get me through, which gets me through just by having that faith, just by believing, just by giving it to him just by turning to his word and turning to the book and turning to the lessons that he's taught me and all that I've learned and still learning. Just, he showed me that he showed me how the strength of faith and how to have faith 
it's not like having faith where I just assume God's got it. God's going to take care of it. I keep going about my day. I, I know that he's with me. I know that I'm not alone. And even if it doesn't go the way I want it to go, I have the faith that it went the way that he wanted it to go because I'm, I'm walking in the path that he's edged out for me. I'm putting my faith in him. Even though I don't see it now, I always end up seeing it in the future. It's like, oh, okay, that was it. Okay, it, it ended up working out. Okay, I wasn't supposed to be there or I would that wasn't supposed to happen because something happened at that point or anything. A better opportunity came around. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. So that's just that's been my big thing. He's he's blew my faith up more than I thought. Amen. Alabaster Box, the unveiling. Experiencing the supernatural realms of God. Train my hands for war. Reclaiming your territory and purpose in God. Soul Food Devotionals. Nourishment for the heart. Where Angels Tread. The Unseen Realms of God. Available wherever books are sold. Alabaster Box Ministries. Linda Casimir. shown me a lot and he's not only my faith with me but with family members with the wife and kids it's like he's given me enough faith to get them through too if they're lacking in faith i got extra for them or i'm holding on to the faith for them correct right as they should because you're the covering mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are the covering. Yeah. That's wonderful. And you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna go from glory to glory. Every day, every day is a new a, a new chance and a new revelation, a new discovery with God. He has yep. no end, he has no he's a bottom he's a bottomless well. You know, you just keep just keep dropping your bucket in that well. That water will never run out. Never run out. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, what about you see? Um, I was here thinking, debating what, what I wanted to share because there's a couple things, but one of them I think is just too personal. But um, I kind of started to share the first one last week on mm -hmm. the last show. But basically, like the Lord revealed to me some stuff that was in me that I didn't know was there for all these years. I knew it was something, but I couldn't quite articulate it or really notice it for what it was, that it was something that, that you know, that needed to be released. But it was um, the need for, the need to, like, control my environment and um, What's what I'm thinking of? Like to control my environment and to have like a sense of, or to create like, it's almost like you create like a um, comfort zone, basically is what it is. Like you create a comfort zone and you don't want anything or anybody to disrupt that comfort zone. And if it gets disrupted or interrupted in any kind of way, it's like, I used to get like this extreme anxiety. I didn't even realize that that's what it was, but I, I would get like extreme anxiety and it's like it boiled up and it's inside of me like and I need to release it but don't know how and I can't explain it and it was recently that somebody 
was able to tell me what they saw and help me put into words what it is I was experiencing. I know it was the Bible God because, excuse me. It took a minute. Um, it took a minute for me to like, excuse me. It took a minute for me to like really um, understand the whole thing that I was experiencing. But long story short, it's basically it stemmed back from even like from childhood where, um, where you, you don't have quite control over everything that's happening around you. So it's like within myself, I would create like in my own, like in my head, I would almost create like a space where you say, okay, this is where I'm going to be able to have some kind of control. Like I can't control that, but I can control this. Or like I will find like a little space within wherever I was. And like, if this is my space and this is how it's going to be. And I'm going to control. And I didn't realize that it just kept building over the years and it spilled over into like even like relationships and, you know, di different relationships, whether it's a relationship, relationship or friendship or whatever. Um, but, um, indirectly people will feel um so like um i'm trying to try and control them but it wasn't them i'm trying to control i'm trying to control my environment and try and keep that that um that safe zone or that comfort zone where i needed it to be but i didn't realize that's what i was doing but until recently that the law showed me that it was that that even was the issue that I was even there and it's like i i've always said that i trust god but then it's like he showed me recently that like, you trust me, but you trust me within your comfort zone. And I know like this, it's like he, the Lord has, has started me on a journey of travel, traveling for work. And it's like, that's totally not me because my comfort zone, I would stay and I did, I stayed somewhere in a job for way longer than I was supposed to because I knew God was calling me up. But I stayed there because it was my comfort zone. It mm -hmm. was steady income. It was, you know, something I felt like I could control, you know. But I feel like the Lord just kind of took me up. It's taking me out. Not just took me up, but it's taking me out of my comfort zone and just showing me, like, I need to be able to release and trust him no matter what, not just within my comfort zone. Because in a sense, when you create these comfort zones, you're telling him you don't trust him. Right. You know, or when you're building up these walls and stuff, it's like, God, I trust you, but I trust you within these four walls. I trust you within this comfort zone, this safe zone. And it's like he's showing me, like, let it go, release, you know? Yeah, because that's not really things, trust. Right. And a lot of the things that God has for us is not going to be in our comfort zone. Exactly correct, 99%. You know? Because you could be praying to God for, oh, God, please bless me with a job that X, Y, Z. But I want to stay here in this state. And God's saying, but the place that I'm going to give you X, Y, Z is over here in this other state or in this other continent. But you ain't willing to let go of where you are. You want God to bless you how you want God to bless you, where you mm -hmm. want God to, how we want you, want God to right. bless you. Right. Um, rather than saying, okay, God, you, you, I pray for this and, you know, and just be open to what the Lord has for you, wherever it is, however he chooses to deliver it to you. Because it might not, it, it, it don't come in packages that we expect. It may not come in a location that we expect. And we have to be willing to be there. Okay, God, if that's where your will is, let me go. You know? Mm -hmm. So and I think that's... Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, see, that's just how... Um, I don't know, I lost my train of thought. You go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I was just going to say, and how many of us have missed out on on a blessing that we've been praying for and hoping for because we wanted God to give it to us That's what packaged we... the way we want it packaged. Right. Over terms. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we want it come looking like what we're comfortable with. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to, it has to, he has, to, the person has to come looking the way mm -hmm. we want them to look. You know, they have to be, you know, look a certain way and they, they, they can't be out of 
the 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 race that we're comfortable with you know if it ain't someone from my heritage or someone from my race of people you know that i'm not comfortable with we don't venture out and see if this person is the answer that i've been praying for and we miss god right we miss god god is colorblind he don't see color mm -hmm. you know your spirit has no color he sees you he sees your heart heart has yeah. no color did you remember what you was going to finish this series? Not quite. But I was, but I would say that I was, um, besides the, the coming out of the comfort zone and just learning to trust God outside of my comfort zone and learning to, to take down these like um, walls. I would say walls. I'll just call them walls, but it's more like a protective. I'll say like a little fortress, like you to build for yourself. Almost. Yeah, but um. I started learning that because I'm in the process of going into actually. Um, there was something else that I went through. I won't go into too much detail because I don't want to get too personal with you know, my, myself. But um, long story short, it's like I was praying to God for something and um, went through um, medical stuff to try and achieve it. And it didn't quite happen. But And I was believing God for, for a certain thing. And I just knew it was going to happen because I just had that kind of faith and I was just thinking positive and, you know, and it didn't happen. But then I just learned in that process, I learned how to um, not only trust God, but to realize that even when he, we don't get what it is we're believing him for, to still trust him and to still have faith and not let it shake your faith, you know? Right. Because if he go move, if he go move only in our little faith box, then he's not mm -hmm. God, right? He's not Lord over your life, because then he has to move only in your little faith box. He's mm -hmm. too big to fit in a faith box, mm -hmm. you know. You got this little faith box. He got this great big limitless box that he wants. He wants to move you into his realm. Mm -hmm. of faith out of your little realm of faith into his big realm of faith you know mm -hmm. and, and learning we, to trust him in the no correct yes. learning to trust his no yes and his no could be the answer to the prayer you you asking him for something and his answer is sometimes no or not yes. now yes. right not yet. Wait. yeah wait not yet. yeah yeah Learning to trust him. I love that fancy. Learning to trust him in the no. That's yeah. awesome. And that's pretty much that's that was pretty much my other lesson that I experienced in the last two years. Mm -hmm. Because we feel because we 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 I don't you know we feel like as long as we pray and have faith to believe, he's gonna give it to us. Right, because because it's been preached that way, and it's wrong. It was erroneously preached that way. You don't have but to give it to you, to you because you pre you prayed for it. True. No one in the scripture but says that. Sometimes he'll give it to you. He, he'll he'll allow you to get it because I've also experienced that too in the last couple of years, where I pray for, um, and for me, it, it, for me it was job or position. I will pray for it and I'll get it. I was like, oh, yes, yes, this is definitely God because the doors are opening. And then you get into the position, you realize, mm -mm, this ain't it. <laughs> right. Because he will allow you to experience, he's going to allow you to experience your level of faith. He's going mm -hmm. to let you walk that out. And then, then you when, you hit, you... when you hit the wall, then he will say, yeah. okay, now let me show you what my level look like. Right. You don't realize you don't realize that you're walking outside his will because he allowed you to he allowed you to have what you what you pray for. So you're thinking, oh, this must be the will of God because like everything right. is falling into place, right? Yeah. I prayed about it and it's just turning out. Like, I'm getting what I want, and then you get there and you realize, wait, God, where are you? I don't feel God. Like you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I think I'm, I think I missed him. <laughs> you know. Right. Right. <laughs> if you have maturity, you can think you missed him. That those who are immature will look to blame God. Mm -hmm. Instead of seeing what it is. 
My pastor has a saying. He says, we pray to God for something and God gave it to us because he's not a God that he should lie because he said anything you ask for in his son name, he would mm -hmm. do. But then when you get what you wanted, then you realize you didn't want what you got. Right. But it, it, it happens to us all the time because, you know, like, okay, yeah, it is. So, um, I was trying to think of the correct song. Psalm um, 37 and 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Train my hands for war. Reclaiming your purpose and territory in God. Alabaster Box, The Unveiling. Experiencing the supernatural realms of God. Where Angels Tread. The Unseen Realms of God. Available on all online book outlets. Linda Casimir. Alabaster Box Ministries. Now for me, when I pray that scripture... I always add my own addendum to it. I say, Lord, if the desire that is in my heart do not line up with your will for my life, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. Because, because God is not a God that he's going to lie. If you say, Lord, you said in your word, if I delight myself in you, you're going to give me the desire of my heart. He's going to give you whatever the desire is that mm -hmm. you have in your heart. But then when you get it, you may not want what you got. Mm -hmm. So for me to play it safe, I always said to the Lord, if this desire in my heart, any desire in my heart that do not line up with your will for my life, remove mm -hmm. it. I don't want it. That's a good prayer. Yeah, that's my addendum to that prayer, to that scripture. And the thing for me, my question is that, that scripture, my question would, would be to the Holy Spirit. Okay, Lord, what exactly does the light myself in the Lord looks like? What does that mean? What mm -hmm. the prerequisite for that? Because we read the light yourself in the Lord, but we really don't stop and think, okay, what does that mean, Lord? Mm -hmm. What does that, what does delighting myself in the Lord look like i want let me achieve this first to its perfection then once i achieve that to the full understanding of what that means then i can take on the other part mm -hmm. where you can give me the desire of my heart because he's not a genie just because you say you love him and you you say you, you know you trust him he can give you what you want. That doesn't mean that's what he means by delighting myself in him. I, I want to know what you mean by delighting myself in you. What does that look like to you? Not mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, and you know, I, when I read that scripture, I, I kind of, it kind of is like a, psych, a, a cyclical pattern to me. It, it's like, it, it's a continuous in my mind, because when I read it, I'm thinking, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And when I, when I hear he will give you the desires of your heart, that, that to me is a prayer because I know what my desires are, mm. but my desires might not be lined up with his perfect will. Right. Now he might give me some things in his permissive will, but is that in his perfect will? So I read that scripture and I read it as a prayer. I'm saying, I, I tell God, God, please give me the desires of my heart. Make what you desire for me. Make that my desire. There you mm -hmm. go. Perfect. And it's like, in that, if, if, if my heart's desire is what he desires to be in my heart, won't that be my delight? Like, Correct. Won't that be like the perfect like delight myself in him? Like that would that would just like perfection right there. And then he will give you the desire of your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. 
That's what I came to find out. Exactly that. It ain't because I put something in my heart, he can give me it because I I love him and I trust him. No. I have to get to a point where what he desires become what I long for with everything in me. Then he he gives me the desire of my heart because that's also his desire for me. Regardless. So yeah. The word of God is a whole lot deeper than we as Christians understand it to be, you know. Mm-hmm. It it's it, God is so deep. He, he this well is so deep, you know, and we have no idea the deepness of God. We have no idea how deep God really is. He's a true truly a very deep, deep, deep God. Deep God. And, and what Francine was saying when she when she helped me to articulate it, which is the trust in God is the no. That's mm-hmm. when you learn I, I definitely learned to to, to say it. To, th- to thank him for not giving me things that I thought I wanted, but mm-hmm. it's not what I needed. Yep. And then the angel, after the fact that you realize, whoa, yeah, I, I, I was tripping asking for that, you know, or, or desiring that. But in, mm-hmm. in the moment, you think that that's what you want, that's what you need. And then when you don't get it, you feel disappointed, you feel sad, whatever. And then as time progresses, you realize, ah, okay, God, I see. And then right. and that's when you become grateful for the no. Right. You don't you ain't grateful for the no right in that moment when you wanted it, but late, as time progresses when you're soon able to see. And even if you don't get mm-hmm. to the point where you see it, you're still supposed to we have to be within ourselves learn to just thank God, regardless of whether or not we get what we want or not, because ultimately he's doing what's best for us. He could see what we can't see. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Because not every not every desire that hits your heart is is from God. Mm-hmm. Like Bev said, few zooms ago, a few zooms ago, that the enemy can also plant things in your heart mm-hmm. and hope that you grab hold of it. And mm-hmm. then when you grab hold of it, you thinking that's something that you wanted, but that mm-hmm. came as a fiery dart from the enemy. Yes, ma'am. Wow. And then you grab hold of it and it build and it build and it build. The Bible says the heart is 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 desperately wicked. Mm-hmm. Who can know it? Mm-hmm. Who dwells in wickedness? So if you ain't delighting your heart in the Lord and your heart naturally is wicked, but you ain't dwell you ain't delighting in God. <laughs> you are fertile ground for the enemy to shoot all kinds of dark, hoping you grab hold of one of it, and then you you grab hold of it and you start praying for that desire, believe, and then start believing that God gonna give you the desire, give you that desire because of that scripture. Mm-hmm. And then when God don't do it, some of us get angry with God and walk away from God. You know, this prayer don't work. You know. The Bible contradicts itself. All the things we, we've all heard people say over and over. Prayer do work. The Bible does not contradict itself. Where the only contradiction in this equation mm-hmm. never is never God. It's never God. Wherever there's a problem, it will always be on our end. Because mm-hmm. we don't take the time to allow the Spirit of God who is the teacher of the ways of God to systematically teach us and break down the scriptures to us so that we can spiritually discern what the Holy Spirit is showing us. So, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah pray that, that, that prayer, like in Psalm, Psalm 139, where is it? Um, Search me, search me, oh God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a prayer. It's 39 and 14, I think there is. Somebody, somebody um, can find it. <laughs> yeah. Think about all the stuff that, um, all the lessons, spiritual lessons, life lessons that we wouldn't have learned if we would have got what we prayed for. Exactly. Very true. Very true. 
or got what we prayed for, got what we tried for, got what we repeatedly tried for, yeah. got what we asked for, with the nose that we got, think of the life lessons. So it's yeah. like you wouldn't have learned that lesson about yourself, about the control. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's mm-hmm. it's um 139, 23, and 24. Okay. Search search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thought. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Bam, right there. <laughs> David had the key. He knew that his heart was desperately wicked. So he said, see if there's any offensive way in me. Before before you plant anything, let's dig up the weeds first. Mm-hmm. And that's an a awesome thing to put into practice before you pray. Yes. Because mm-hmm. when you go into the presence of God to pray, you want to be clean. You don't mm-hmm. want to be dirty. Example, you may just fuss with your husband, cuss him out, or fuss at your kid, or whatever. Yeah. You know, you want to come clean. You can't come with dirty, you come with your spirit dirty into a holy sanctified space mm-hmm. and, express, and expect God to, to move on your behalf, whether you're praying for yourself or, so, or for someone else. So that, though, for me, those are, that's one of the things I, I do daily before I get into prayer. I always, one, repent. Mm-hmm. And say, Lord, whatever I've said, whatever I've done, whatever thoughts I've had that grieved your spirit, I ask for your forgiveness. Amen. Yes. That's the first thing I do before I open my mouth to pray about anything. Mm-hmm. And I always ask if I don't quite say it like Psalm, I mean, like Psalm 139, 23 and 24 says it. But I usually say, ask God to search the dark crevices of my heart. Mm-hmm. And see if there's any evil or wicked way in there. Mm-hmm. Anything that would be a grievance to his Holy Spirit. Yeah, Anything mm-hmm. fine, remove it. Those mm-hmm. are the words that I use. Right, which, right. Which is basically the same, the same thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm just not saying it like scripture says it. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's, right. It summarizes the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I do those two things faithfully every day. And most nights, not every night, (laughs) because sometimes I fall asleep before I say it. I always repent before I go to sleep as well. So, Lord, forgive me for my sin, because you don't know if you're going to wake up and you want to make sure you're right. Girl. (laughs) Girl. (laughs) You want to make sure you're right with God. Yes. You slip into eternity. That's right. (laughs) That's so, right. Most nights I do. Sometimes it, I'll be honest, it doesn't happen. But mm-hmm. that's another good practice. I got another good thing to put into practice. Mm-hmm. When you go in your bed and you find yourself drifting off, or you, you go in you go in your bed, you know you're going to sleep. Just take mm-hmm. a moment and repent. Because yep. you know, it's so much that we do and or say or even think. That is a grievance to the Holy Spirit that our natural minds not even aware of. Mm-hmm. Because God ways and our ways aren't the same. Sure. His thoughts and our thoughts aren't the same. So, you know, we may say something, do something, or think something, and we think, well, that's okay. I didn't sin, but God is saying, yes, you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. So, though, you know, to be honest, like I had to say, to be on the safe side of the 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 the, the, the room, just repent. Get it. Make sure. Make sure it's right. Right. Choose. Choose to be right with God. That's I. That's what I try to do most of the time. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I fall short. I ain't gonna sit up here and say I get it right every time. No, I don't. No, oh, no. But, none of us. None of us. None of us. Human can. <laughs> but most of the times, you know, I try to. You know, put these little tactics, you know, that God has allowed man to come up with to help us in our walk with God, to to live a life that is holy and pleasing to God. 
It's little things we can do and we can learn from talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, everybody got their own way of praying and, you know, and all the requirement is, is you pray and ask for it in the name of Jesus. That's, that's, the, that's you know, mine's, yours, and everybody else. That's God's um, order mm -hmm. for us to do when it comes to prayer. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's so true. It's so true. You know, for me, there was so much things these last couple of years that God has shown me. One thing that really stands out for me is I remember when he first started me into the season of his training me and he had me very regimented and very disciplined. I mean, talk about army disciplined. I, he had me so dis disciplined spiritually that when he, he changed the season, I fought him. I fought him because mm -hmm. I got like series that, that became my comfort zone, mm -hmm. but I didn't see it as a comfort zone because it was disciplined. You know, when I, I think so, of, I know ahead. what you're talking, I know what you're talking about, but I don't think any, I don't think the viewers would know what you're talking about specifically when you say it was disciplined. Okay. He took me on a journey um, for about 15 to 18 years where he would have me on a nightly basis anywhere. Sometimes it would be seven, eight hours. Sometimes nightly it would be every two hours, two, three hours where he, I would have to go before him and he would just systematically be teaching me and, and stripping me and showing me how to, how to know who he is, how to come into his presence, how to learn of him. And it was a, a, a very disciplined um, season in my life. It was set hours. Sometimes he would change the hours. Sometimes it would be between 8 to 10 o'clock or sometimes it would be between 10 to 12 o'clock. But it was very regimented. And I was go. I would go before the Lord for these set hours, or sometimes during the day I'd be in His presence for six, seven hours. All the kids were living at home at the time, so they were they were witnesses to this, as well as my husband, where he was training me and he was, was teaching me how to use the prophetic gift that he had on my life, what it all entailed, and he would slowly be showing me the different the different levels of the gift that he gave me as he started to reveal all these different things. So I got used to that disciplined life, spiritual life. So that when he changed that season, 18 years later, I fought him because it became my comfort zone. Even though it wasn't comfortable, I got comfortable in that disciplined season of my life. I, I fought God, didn't realize that's what I was doing. I was rebuking the devil, Satan. No, you're not going to take me and cause me not to, to continue with this. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No, I'm going back into prayer. And I would go into prayer and I would, I would feel the resistance because I'm like, Pushing and trying to fall. It kind of, it kind of like remind me of you know when you um as mothers and you breastfeeding and mm -hmm. the child get to the point where you need to start weaning the child or or they you, the child used to having a pacifier mm -hmm. and that became mm -hmm. that becomes the comfort for the child and then it gets to the point where you as a parent know okay it's time for you to get rid of this pacifier and that child kicks off fit yeah for like two or three weeks and you the parents you suffering too because you can't sleep because this child kicking up a fight putting up a fight with you the child think you're doing something against them when in actuality you're doing something to help them 
because you see the child has matured. So it, it reminds me of that. He saw that I had matured to a different level. But I got, it was my comfort zone. That you was my pacifier. Huh? But you wanted to stick to your routine. Yes. Yes. I wanted to stick to my routine of going before his presence two, three hours every night. That was my comfort zone. What you mean? Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are <laughs> not going to put me out of this. Devil, I rebuke you. I, man, I rebuke him. I rebuke him with tired. Soul Food. A daily devotional available wherever books are sold. Iron Sharpens Iron. A Caribbean twist to talk shows. Reset. Women's Retreat. A time to relax and connect with God. Alabaster Box Ministries. Linda Casimir. <laughs> and he absolutely refused to keep me there till I finally had to realize, okay, this is not the enemy. This definitely got to be the Lord. But Lord, why would you why, why would you not want me to stay like this? This is a good thing. Coming to you, coming to you for to spend that time alone with you, that's a good thing. Why would you want to change it? But in the last two years, he's shown me the new thing he took me to was just as powerful as that disciplined season. And even more so, I've noticed, because he started opening, I mean, flinging open some doors that he never, he never flung open in that discipline season, you know, mm -hmm. that discipline season was for the training, the educating, the teaching. Now it's time to start putting those lessons to work. Exactly. So he and graduated. Even soldiers, even soldiers leave boot camp at some exactly. point. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. He graduated you, and you were telling him no. Put me back in class. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I don't want the cap and gown. <laughs> <laughs> yes, basically that's exactly what I was doing. Yep. 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 Was yep. Out, walking yourself into the classroom, talking about I'm gonna learn today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the teacher ain't showing up. Want where everybody at? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yep. 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 So those two years have taught me spiritually a wonderful lesson, you know, that, man, when he moves you into a new season, a new season comes with so much new stuff, but it don't mean that you did something wrong. Nope. And I had to mm -hmm. learn that. It don't mean something went wrong. It means it's time to move. Uh, it's time to put those lessons to work. Mm -hmm. So that is what I've learned in the last two years. And when I grabbed, finally, finally stopped fighting and grabbed hold of that and receive it as what it was, doors just started flying open all over the place. All these doors. And this iron shopping iron was one of the doors. That just oh, flew open. Only do it. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. Because look with Iron Shop and Iron. We minister to more people just with this than with anything else I've ever done. In all the 18 years of the disciplining comfort zone that I was in. Yes, I minister to a lot of people. I minister to thousands. Now we're ministering to millions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's t that two years have taught me so much. 
to to ride the wave with God. Ride the wave. Trust Him. Trust mm -hmm. Him for every season. Mm -hmm. So that that was my revelation. He's so awesome. Okay. So all right. So we are going to bring this train into the station. It was a very good conversation, as usual, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, team, as always, for very insightful, wonderful discussion on where God has taken each of us and has revealed to each of us the last couple of years. And I'm excited because there's more to come. Until, until he returns, we got work to do. Amen. We got work to do. Mm -hmm. Whether he returned tomorrow... Oh, he don't return for another 200 years. We have work to do. We got to get ready to do the work that he has given for each one of those who are called by his name to do, to achieve. And I pray that the, every panelist that is on here tonight and those who did not sign in tonight but comes on, usually comes on, that each one is faithful in their field in bringing in the harvest for Jesus Christ. We want to thank... Um, all our subscribers and all our viewers, we thank you so much. We love you. We continue to pray for you and ask that the Holy Spirit do what he needs to do in your lives. We know that this goes out to a lot of nations that do not know who Jesus Christ is. And we pray that because you do tune into this station, this channel, that you are beginning to understand who is this God that we all serve and we all talk about every Saturday night. He's an awesome God. And we want you all to get to know him. Like Miss Bev said earlier tonight, you know, just get on your knees and ask him to reveal himself to you. Trust me, 100%, he will do it. He hears the cries of your heart. He really, really does. He really, really does. So on that note, we're going to leave you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We bless you and we thank you and ask that you uh, come back next week when we gather again for another episode of Iron. Sharpens Iron. Sharpens Iron. Amen. Amen. Yes. Be before you let it go, can you do a sinner's prayer? Yes. Yes, definitely. For all those of you who are out there who are ready to find out who this Christ that we serve, we're going to go ahead and lead you in a prayer to begin your journey for 2022 in your learning to know who Jesus Christ is and who the spirit of the living God is. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Father, we bring before you all those whose heart has decided to reach out to you, to get to know you. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you reveal yourself to them. All you got to do, my brothers and sisters, is say, Lord Jesus, I come before you with my heart open to understand. I want to know. I've heard so many different things and I don't know which is correct, which is truth. The people that you send on this channel every Saturday talk about this God. I want to know who this God is. Reveal yourself to me. Show me who you really are. And I will serve you. I open my heart to you. I ask you to come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be the Lord of my life. Teach me who you are. Give me your truth. Let your Holy Spirit have his way in my mind, in my heart, in my emotions in my decisions, in everything that I am, I ask that you, Spirit of God, 
have control and show me and teach me. I honestly want to know who this Jesus is, who the Father is. By your Holy Spirit, help me, teach me, show me, lead me to the fountains of truth. In Jesus' name, I ask this. Amen. 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 He will answer your prayer. He really, really will. Every last one of us on this panel have said that prayer. In our own words, of course. And he has come to each and every one of us. Correct, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he will do the same for you. He is not a God that respects persons. What he's done for others, he will do for you. It don't matter where in the world you are. It don't matter what in the world you've been told. It don't matter what in the world you have done. The only thing that matters is the right now, where your heart is right now at this moment. He will come to you, whether he comes to you in a dream, he comes to you uh, through this channel or other channels, however he chooses to reveal himself to you. He will answer you because he's a faithful God. Amen. Amen. So on that note, we thank you. We wish you a wonderfully blessed week. And thank you for joining us every week on every episode. And thank you for subscribing. We appreciate that. We appreciate more so that you tune in and you, you allow us to come into your homes and come into your heart. We, are, we really appreciate that because that is a very personal and wonderful thing that you, you're allowing us to do this people who are virtually strangers to you, but you're allowing it because the spirit of the Lord is leading you to it. We take it not light. We take it not light. So on that note, thank you very much. Have a wonderful, blessed week. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask, six feet distance, protect you, protect your family so that we can come back next week. Mm -hmm. For another episode of Iron Sharpens Iron. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.